All right, here we go, an actual spectrum. This is the proton NMR or H1 NMR spectrum of 1,2-dimethoxyethane. I got the spectra from this, the Japanese website we'll use a lot, SDBS, but I modified it. I added a TMS signal. It wasn't there on theirs because I think, my guess is they keep their TMS concentration so low that we can't see it at this zoom level, but if you zoomed in on it, you could see it down there. But I added it because you'll be seeing it on the NMR spectrums that you hopefully will take in the spring. <laughs> and uh, so here's our spectra, and this is the molecule, 1,2-dimethoxyethane. So this group right here, the oxygen with the line terminus right here, remember that's a carbon and three hydrogens, those are called methyls. So this is a methoxy group, we call it, and that's a methoxy group. So the reason why it's 1, 2 is because we'll number the carbon parent chain there, 1, 2. And then so it's got a methoxy on carbon 1 and carbon 2, and that's two carbons, so it's ethane. So 1, 2, dimethoxyethane. Now I'm not going to expect you to name, these are called ethers, right? I'm not going to expect you to name those formally till later, so just thought I'd point it out now. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to show you how I want you to label all our spectra we're going to take or you're going to give in this year. So in pr for proton NMR, I want you to always start with what's called the upfield signal. The signal is to the left. That's at a higher parts per million. I want you to label the first one A, the next one B. And this here, uh, I think this is an impurity or it's uh, something called a spinning sideband for signal B, but we're going to ignore that. So that's signal A, B, and then at zero is that, should I label that C? No, because that's TMS. That's the, the internal standard or tetramethyl silane. <clears throat> so that's not part of our molecule. Okay, so let's look at this. This molecule here has, has these two uh, carbons in the center of it that are equivalent to each other. If you look at it symmetry-wise, they, they see the same things. So they're equivalent, and the hydrogens on them are equivalent. And how many hydrogens does this carbon one have? It already it has two bonds to a oxygen and a carbon, so it needs four total. It has two hydrogens. This has two hydrogens as well, so that's four hydrogen grouping of equivalent hydrogens. Then we also have the outer uh, methyls, the carbons with three hydrogens. There's three hydrogens here, three hydrogens there. Uh, we have those, and if those are uh, sorry, those make a six hydrogen signal. But let's label the first one. So this first one, the the more down the more downfield signal here, that's signal A. That's the four hydrogen singlet. And uh, what is a singlet? A singlet is a peak with just a single peak to it. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and then this this other one here. Then if I'm calling that A uh, four hydrogen singlet, what's this next one? That's the B signal, six hydrogen singlet as well. And You'll notice that the signal A is the one with four hydrogens instead of six, so it has less hydrogens and it's a shorter signal. And B with six hydrogens is taller, we'll talk more about that. And uh, finally, you'll see these hydrogens on the end are definitely different than the hydrogens in the middle, so you get two signals for them. So that's that's a first NM, proton NMR spectrum. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you this spectra without the A, B, T, M, S, the molecule and the labels. And I want you just to recreate exactly what you have here. So this is the answer key for the next question.